Okay. Um, so let's see, there were a couple problems that I got uh, the most questions about um, that people were asking. So I'm gonna deal with those first. They were mostly from section 2.5. Um, so I'll take those in order. Um, yeah, the first kind of problem was something like this. Uh, do you know how many questions will be on the exam? Um, let me look at that. Um, uh, let me let me answer that um, in a, in in a bit. I think it's um, I think it's the same as uh, exam one, but I can actually check that really quickly. Just pause the share. <clears throat> uh, so someone's asking me in a direct message about a certain question. Yeah, that's one of the ones that I'll be covering. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. Process assessment. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, 18 questions. And I think that's, I think it's 18 questions consistently for all the exams. Okay. Um, so, so for those of you asking me to do particular, um, type or particular numbers of, of questions from the practice exam, um, those are always different, right? Those are those are different each time um, uh, you get a new practice exam. So I will, um, I'm gonna go over three questions that I got a lot of people asking about. And if you, um, uh, if you still have different questions that you wanna see, then I'll uh, do those as well. Uh, but I'm gonna start off with this one so um, this one's saying uh, in the image below O is the center um, and then this line is tangent this line is tangent to the circle um, I'm going to start off by just taking this one and um, <clears throat> um, drawing in the number information that we have here so we've got A, B, O is equal to 22 degrees and uh, AOC is equal to 146 degrees. Now, uh, when they say, when they say, um, one second, when they say AOC is 146, um, we have to think about whether they're talking about this angle or this angle, because uh, both of those could be AOC depending on how you look at it. So we just want to compare that to um, 180 degrees, and we can see that this is less than 180 degrees. So the one that we want to be looking at is this one here, which is 146. So, so that angle there, uh, the one that's less than 180 degrees, that's our 146. And then uh, PC is equal to eight. Now, this doesn't seem like a lot of information. Um, uh, but somehow we need to figure out the length of BC, which is this line here. Um, I'm going to start off with um, the easiest piece of information that we can fill in. <clears throat> um, given this, so uh, the first thing that we can start off knowing is that um, uh, since these are all radius lines, or these are all radii, uh, so OA and OB and OC, these are all radius lines. So all these radius um, marks here, we can say these are the same length. So uh, we can start off with that. Um, that allows us to fill in a little bit more information. Um, 
we can say that this is an isosceles triangle. So if this is 22, then this is 22. And if this is 22 and this is 22, then the remaining one is going to be 180 minus all that. So let's see, that's uh, 180 minus 44. I'm just going to pull up a calculator. Okay, so this is 136. And um, then we've also got, um, if this is 146 and this is 136, then all three of these must add up to 360 since that's a full circle. So we can say 360 minus 146 minus 136 gives us 78. Okay. Um, and then again, we've got another isosceles triangle. So if this is 78, then if this is 78, um, then the remaining two angles have to add up to 102. So that's going to be uh, 51 and 51. Now, um, what we have right now is not enough. What we have right now is not enough to figure out what X is, right? We've got a lot of information, right? Um, we've got a lot of information. We know all of these angles, um, but we really need to figure out a way to get that information over to this triangle here. Because that's the one where we have a side length, right? That's the only length that we're given. Um, that's the only one we can figure out right now with the information that we're given. So um, what I'm going to do then um, is somehow I need to get more information about this triangle here. So um, this says that segment PB is tangent to the circle and segment PC is tangent to the circle. Now that means two things for us um, in terms of information that we can have. Uh, one of them is if you have two tangent lines going through the same point that are tangent to the same circle, they have to be the same length, right? So we kind of uh, did a roundabout way of proving that with a, um, I showed you that uh, proof with the compass and the straight edge, but but these two lengths, right? This was sort of the last step of making those uh, tangent lines. Um, with H, those are the same length. So that means that if this is eight, then this has to be eight as well. Um, so that's still not enough information. We've got that this side length is eight and this side length is eight and this is X, but we need some angle information. So, so the other piece, that we can actually tell from the fact that this is a tangent line is maybe a little bit easier to see if I extend this out. So if I extend each of these tangent lines a little longer, um, you can maybe remember uh, this idea that if you have a tangent line and you have a radius line, um, no matter where that radius line is and that uh, tangent line going through the same point, um, those are always going to form 90 degree angles, right? So those 90 degree angles um, in this case are formed, um, uh, probably the most useful spot to put it, probably the most useful spot to put it would be uh, right here and uh, right here, right? Right, so these are 90 degree angles. Um, so that means that uh, we can fill in uh, the rest of these angles with that information. So yeah, the two things, when you see these tangent lines here, um, the tangent line segments are the same length. 
if they're going to the same point. So this is eight, this is eight. And then uh, also you've got that, uh, this radius line and a tangent line always form a 90 degree angle on there. So um, using that information, we can say, well, we've got 51 here. The whole thing is 90. So um, this is going to be uh, uh, 39 and 39. And if this is 39 and this is 39, then uh, this remaining angle has to be uh, 102. Uh, so now we have all the information that we need. So now I'm going to redraw this. Um, I'm going to redraw this triangle that I've got here now that I've got all the information. Because uh, the last thing to do is just solve for x, but that's still uh, kind of a task on its own to do so. So anyway, that triangle that I've got there, uh, this has side lengths x, 8, and 8, and then uh, 39, 39, 102. Okay, so this triangle, this triangle is not a, um, this triangle is not a uh, 90 degree angle. So we can't, um, we can't use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Can't use that. So um, what we need to do instead is use the law of cosines. Right, we can use the law of cosines to figure out uh, what that missing side length is. So the law of cosines looks like this. It says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus two ab cosine of this angle here. <clears throat> um, so in terms of this triangle, we could label uh, these two legs, A and B, and then label this uh, C. Uh, and I'm just doing that because this is the, um, I like the hypotenuse to be C here. So anyway, so we've got X squared is equal to eight squared plus eight squared minus two times eight times eight times cosine of and then what angle should I use? Or what should I what should I be putting here in the cosine? Well, it's got to be it's got to be this angle here, right? The one that's uh, opposite this side that we're uh, trying to figure out since that's our C. That means our capital C has got to be 102. Great. Okay. So um, I'm going to switch over to GeoGebra to solve for this, uh, to kind of show you how I would input this. Uh, so x is just going to be the square root of all that. So go over my algebra tool. Say this is, um, uh, so let's see, so the square root of uh, eight squared plus eight squared. And as you're typing this, make sure that you hit the right arrow afterwards, right? Uh, after you're done with the exponent, uh, or else you'll keep working in the exponent. So two times eight times eight. Uh, times uh, 
times cosine of uh, parentheses 102. Okay, so um, all that then square rooted to get rid of this uh, uh, x squared here, I get uh, 10.7. Okay, um, so yeah, like I said, um, uh, just using everything that we learned from uh, the previous section about triangles, but the two new things here are that um, tangent line segments that go through the same point have the same length. And then uh, also you've got this 90 degree angle between the radius and these tangent lines here. Okay. So that's the first question that I wanted to go over. Um, if you have any, uh, I'm going to erase this unless anybody has any questions about that one. Uh, can you use law of sines instead, or do you have to use law of cosines? Um, law of sines would be fine. Yeah, you could um, you could use um, uh, sine of. 102 over 8 is equal to sine of 39 over 8. Yeah, you could use that. That would be fine as well. Could you show again what you did for uh, GeoGebra? Sure. I'll type in. Uh, yeah, I'll just type in again what I, I did here. So I'm trying to get the square root of everything that I wrote down here. So uh, first thing I have to do is click on Algebra to get to this point here, and then I'll say, um, uh, so I don't have to do x equals or anything like that, um, since I'm not sure about its algebra solving, uh, but it does, I'm just going to say um, square root, so sqrt, and then parentheses, that gives me the square root symbol, and then 8 squared plus eight squared. And then each time I'm done with my, um, each time I'm done with my exponent, I hit the right arrow on my keyboard just to get rid of that, um, uh, make sure I'm not working in the exponent anymore. And then cosine of one over two. Two times eight times eight. Um, I'm getting something different this time around. Maybe I. That's yeah. That's what I got. I got twelve point four when I did it. Huh, what's going on here? I think I it's because like of the degrees, because I, yeah. I took out the degree sign on the second one and it worked. Let me see if I can add it in. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was the degrees missing there. Which answer would you want? Would like the answer be then? Uh, tw 12.4 for sure. Okay. Yeah, I think I somehow lost, like I clicked somewhere else and it didn't, uh, usually it automatically adds degrees on there, right? Um, when it's, uh, it just assumes degrees on there. But yeah, I guess be careful with that. Okay, so yeah, 12.4. Let's make sure that's one of the options. Yeah, 12.4. The answer there. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Okay. All right, so that's that one. Um, there's one other one um, that's similar to that one I wanted to show you. Yeah, so I got a lot of questions about uh, this one. 
So let me find a good example of this one. Yeah, let's work with this one. <clears throat> so this one's saying that um, uh, AMC is the diameter of the circle. And um, so the information that you're getting when you see that AMC is the diameter of the circle is that um, if you think about this arc here, right, each of these arcs have to be 180 degrees, right? Um, if that arc is 180 degrees, then that means that this angle, right, this uh, angle that touches the outside of the circle uh, has to be half of that, right? So this, uh, what you've got here is a 90 degree angle, same thing with this thing over here. So um, that first piece of information that we can add is this 90 degree angle here. Um, and then it says DM is 8.8. .8, so this is 8.8. .8. And uh, BM is also 8.8. .8, so this is 8.8. .8. Um, so really what these um, uh, two pieces of information are adding to this is that um, these two triangles are symmetrical to each other. So um, what you can... Uh, this is just like this large triangle here is just a reflection of this triangle over here. So, um, and then we want the area of ADC, this one here, ADC. So um, uh, sometimes make sure, make sure you're finding the right thing, right? They might be asking for a side length or a, uh, this time they're looking for an area. Okay, so ADC, um, but the, the, the process is the same, right? Um, what we need to figure out to find the area of that um, is this side length here, all right? So I'll just redraw that uh, triangle uh, to show you why that's important. All right, so here's, here's our triangle. And uh, the very last thing we need to do The very last thing we need to do is find the area of that triangle. So you know that the area of a right triangle is one half um, uh, is one half base times height. So you can um, <laughs> let me put it this way. So I'm lining it up the same way that it's lined up here. Um, you could either find um, this area by finding um, uh, one half base times height. So you could think of this as being the base and this being the height. Um, you could also think about it um, as this is the base, right? Everything from here to here. And then this altitude line is your height, right? So there's two different ways to, um, uh, there's two different ways to think about this. Um, in terms of finding the area. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use the information that I have here to find, I'm just gonna fill in as much information as I can about all these triangles, and then we can worry about the area. Uh, let's see, one other thing they, they say is, oh yeah, AM is equal to 6.3. Right. So I am going to start off by drawing, um, right, redrawing this triangle here, right? All 
right? It looks something like this. And um, I'm gonna do something that I'm gonna suggest you do every time. Uh, so what we have here is a right triangle that we've dropped an altitude line through, right? So we know from a previous section that uh, if you have a right triangle with an altitude line dropped through it, that um, you get three similar triangles. So what I would suggest is to um, help yourself out because I like to line all of these triangles up. Um, I would suggest just making some distinction between uh, this angle and then the other angle. So if this angle, we don't know what it is, but let's say that this is 40, this one has to be 50. Or if this one's 30, this one has to be 60. So if this is alpha, then this one's got to be beta. And then if this one's beta, this one here has to be alpha. And then alpha plus beta is 90. So, so these, are, these are the way the angles are set up in here um, inside this triangle. Now, um, I'm going to maybe do one little adjustment here just to help visualize this a little bit. All right, so that or that orange line is this line here. Okay. All right, that's ninety degrees. That's ninety degrees. Okay. Uh, so if I line up these three triangles, I'm going to take this one, uh, this small one, and I'm going to line every single one of them up in the same way. Um, I think it's good to go through this process because um, um, it's very easy to mix up what line is going where, right, um, with each of these. So uh, I'm going to line up all three triangles where alpha is over here and beta is over here. And these are similar triangles, right? So... <clears throat> um, in this smallest triangle, so that's this one here. Okay. In that smallest triangle there, um, this line is 6.3 and this one's 8.8. .8. Okay, that's the only information we're given. So, so 6.3, since that we have this lined up, you can think of it as being rotated 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise. Um, but the way that I like to think about it is this line from the right angle to beta is going to be 6.3. So from the right angle to beta, that's 6.3. This line from the right angle in this triangle, it's, it's going to, you know, alpha, beta and the right angle, um, you know, all three of them in some sense. But, but in this triangle specifically, it's going from the right angle to alpha. Right, so from the right angle to alpha is 8.8. .8. So I'm going to say from the right angle to alpha is 8.8. .8. Okay, um, this next triangle, this one on the left, right? Okay, so this one on the left, um, the only one that we're given is that. Um, uh, this right angle from, uh, sorry, the right angle to beta. So the right angle to beta is 8.8 .8, and it's actually lined up the same way that it is here, right, in the diagram. Uh, but I'm drawing a lot of pictures, right? That's, that's the long and short, but I'm drawing a lot of pictures here. Okay. Um, and then this last part here, um, 
it doesn't seem like I have any information on this largest triangle. Um, but let's see what we can figure out and see if we can transfer some of that information over, um, over here. So um, that's just what we were given in the problem uh, without having to find anything out. Uh, but now we've got all our information organized. Um, we can find without having to do any um, similar triangle stuff, we can figure out what this uh, missing piece is just by using Pythagorean theorem. So I'll go ahead and do that really quickly here. Um, see if I can erase these previous ones. It's still working here. Okay. So this is going to be uh, that missing side is going to be square root of uh, eight point eight squared plus six point three squared. So that's uh, that's ten point eight. So we figured that part out. Um, that 10.8, let me get a, get back to the question. Okay, so that 10.8 um, belongs over here, which in my large triangle is, um, uh, from beta to the right angle. Right, so from beta to the right angle is 10.8. Uh, so we do have that piece of information there. Okay, um, let's try to solve for some missing uh, side lengths here. Um, I'm just going to label one of them because I think that'll be enough to uh, solve for it. But let's see if we can figure out this uh, x here. So this x um, is going to be this side here from alpha to beta on this triangle. And then um, from the right angle to alpha is our x. Okay. Um, let's start off, see if we can figure out what um, uh, X is using the information that we've got in these two triangles. So the equation that we can set up here is that, um, let's say, uh, let's do it this way. So let's compare uh, 10.8 over 6.3, so 10.8 over 6.3, that's gotta be the same ratio as, um, so 10 over 6.3 has gotta be the same as X over 8.8, right? Or another way that we could write that same equation would be to, uh, some of you maybe think about it this way where you say, um, hey, x over 10.8 has got to be equal to 8.8 .8 over 6.3. Um, so either way, um, either way, you're going to end up with the same answer, right? Both of these, uh, if you do cross multiplication, you get uh, 10.8 times 8.8 .8 divided by 6.3 is equal to X. So let me just run to the calculator. 10.8 times 8.8. .8. 
divided by 6.3, it looks to be about 15.1. Okay, so 15.1 is this, um, this side length here. Maybe I'll just label it over here. Now that's actually enough information to find the area of this triangle, right? Because we have um, this base and this height here. Um, but you could figure out the rest of it, right? However you need to, but um, using these capital B base and capital H height um, like this, you'll get the same answer. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this as my base and this is my height. So um, that area of the triangle that I've drawn in pink here, A, D, C, that they're asking for is going to be one half times 10.8 times So I got 81.54. Let's see if that's one of the options. Uh, okay, must've had some rounding errors um, in here. I'm here, but it's definitely this option. Um, I think the rounding error, maybe we could have fixed that by changing, uh, Messing with our settings for the number of decimal places that they show. Yeah, so maybe uh, that that seems about right. So uh, rather than 15.1, we could have had 15.08. Yeah, that would have given us a better, um, better result there. Okay, uh, so yeah, big insights. Really, really, you are just setting up um, a problem that you're probably going to have to do um, twice in this exam, which is to uh, set up a set of similar triangles here, right? So using using this right triangle set up here, uh, altitude drop through right triangle gives you three similar triangles. I would set up all three of these triangles just like I did it here. Um, that's the consistent way that I found um, um, to not make mistakes in this one, right? To uh, always keep track of everything. If I don't do that, um, there's a big chance that I'll put an 8.8 .8 maybe accidentally over here uh, or put side lengths in the different spots um, and then mess up my ratio equations. Um, there's also a really good chance uh, would you recommend changing the decimal places to three or four? You can you can change it to a hundred. Um, I think it's um, uh, if you're doing all of your math in GeoGebra, um, then if you're doing let me let me say this: if you're doing everything all at once, then the answers that you get are only ever going to be uh, one decimal place, right? Um, one or two decimal places. But if you're kind of like doing things one step at a time, like I was doing here, um, then I would I would set it to four or uh, yeah, I think I think four. Four is a good standard for that. Okay. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and clear that. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you some of the some of the other ones. So, so this one's asking um, not for the area but for the diameter. So you're, you're going to use that same exact process. 
Um, the reason I wanted to show this one mostly is because this one's a little more obvious which angle is alpha and which one's beta. Um, but I would still do exactly what I did. Right. I would still do exactly what I did um, where I lined up those three triangles um, where they all have the same orientation just to make sure that everything's uh, making sense. Yeah, so uh, sometimes they're asking for the area, sometimes they're asking for the diameter. Um, I've also seen ones where they'll ask for a, um, yeah, like this one, they're asking for CM. So your, your job is to find this missing side length here. Um, but all of, the, all of those are just kind of setting up those three similar triangles. And then it's some uh, ratio, uh, some ratio equation that you'll have to use. Okay. Um, sure. So somebody's asking, um, how do we know how many lines of reflection? Oh, whoops. Sorry. Uh, how many lines of reflection are needed to prove congruency with two triangles? Um, that's a good question. So let's go to. Um, well, in your notes, you have a. Um, um, I think this must have gotten uh, lost in the uh, notes on a lot of people, or uh, we kind of looked at a lot of things that day. Let's see, stop share. Let's go to whiteboard. Okay. So here, here's the short guide, all right? Um, reflections take um, one line of reflection. Uh, rotations take two lines of reflection. Um, translations, so that was where it just uh, moves. And um, last one, we have glide reflections. Take three lines of reflection. So, so really your task um, when you're figuring out, um, really your task when you're figuring out um, how many lines of reflection that this takes, um, you need to figure out which of these four that is. So just like when you um, uh, when you were given those two triangles, right? If you have something like boom, 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 and um, right, boom, 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 like that. Um, when you see these. Um, triangles like this, um, you want to think about um, kind of the orientation of these, right, to figure out um, uh, which of these four it is. So um, you might be given something like, I, I think about this in terms of the, um, the angles, right? So from smallest to largest angle, I'm going from here to here, to here, right? So smallest angle, medium angle, largest angle. So that's a clockwise motion. Smallest angle, medium angle, largest angle, that's also a clockwise motion. So that's got to be, uh, since these are both clockwise, and then they have the same orientation, um, it's gotta be either a rotation or a translation just looking at it, I know that it can't be a translation, right? It's not just me sliding, uh, moving that over. So one of them has to be, um, uh, so it's gotta be a rotation. That means it's gotta be two lines of reflection. 
Um, same process, right? If you want to try and tell the difference between a reflection and a glide reflection, right? That's that's uh, what that means there. Um, it, in a different question, it says to rotate under a point. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, how many lines of reflection are needed to prove congruency? Yeah, so, so the way that you're proving congruency of two triangles. So, so, so that that's exactly what I'm talking about here. Is if you if you wanted to prove the congruency of uh, this triangle here, you would take. So you'd say, are these two congruent? Well, yeah. The way that we would do that is we would. Um, let me see if I can figure this out here. You would take. Um, you would reflect this triangle over here right so you'd reflect this one over here and you'd get something that looked maybe like that oops um well i'm not i'm not going to try and draw this accurately because i can i can just show you in geogebra maybe if you still have questions about it but um you would reflect it once and then it would look something like that. And then you would reflect it a second time. And that second time that you reflect it over here, you would get that same triangle overlaid on there. So it took you one, two lines of reflection to get back to, um, uh, to, get back to this other triangle. So that's you proving congruency by that. Um, so I'm not sure if that, uh, answered your question, but that's, um, uh, really, it's just a matter of figuring out which of these four you're dealing with. Um, it'll never take more than three, right? Um, if it, if it, as long as it's one of those, these four, uh, isometries, right, is the category of these, then it'll take either one, two, or three. And, um, yeah, you just use this same guide. So it's not always one line of reflection. So it's not always based on the situation. Uh, no, it's so so specifically if it's if it's just a reflection, if it's just a reflection, something that looks right, something that looks like that, then that is one line of reflection. That's all you need. That's all you would need to do to show. Oops, that's all you would need to do to show that those are uh, congruent to each other. But if you um, have a glide reflection, so a glide reflection is something different, right? So remember, we did that exercise, right, where it looks something like this, where um, it's not just a reflection, it's a reflection and then a translation on top of that. So that's something, um, that's something that takes three lines of reflection. Show. So just normal reflections and then glide reflections. That's the difference between one and three. All right. Um, in a different question, it says to rotate under a point, but how do I know if it's clockwise or counterclockwise? Okay. Let me let me look up an example of that and I can show you um, how to do that. But I would um, I would look at the video that I posted. Um, and that announcement on YouTube where I go over all the GeoGebra, um, I go over all the GeoGebra stuff. But yeah, let me let me look at. Um, I'll show you. Work at GeoGebra for a second here. Okay, so um, let's say that you are given the problem. Um, rotate point A. So here's here's the problem. It'll say something like this. It'll say um, rotate point A along the rotation arrow um, DC B. Right. 
Um, <clears throat> so rotating point A, um, the first thing you want to do is recognize that this is um, the center of your, uh, this is the kind of center of your rotation. So you're sort of uh, uh, putting a pivot down here at C because that's the um, uh, smallest angle, or sorry, that's the uh, middle point of that angle there. So when you try to click on rotate around a point like this, um, it says you need to know, uh, select the object to rotate. So that's A. Select a center point, that's our C, and then the angle. So um, you maybe know that you need to find this angle. So when I see DCB, I'm going to go DCB specifically like that to get my uh, angle that's centered at C. So this is 70 degrees. Now, here's probably what you're asking, right? When you go to um, uh, make that transform rotate around a point, right? You're rotating um, the object A around the center point C, and then it asks you for uh, 70, you know, 70 degrees, like we figured out. And then, um, and then you're not sure whether it should be clockwise or counterclockwise. So the way to do this. Sorry, I thought there was some way to have a. Freehand line here, so the order of this matters right when you see DCB. When you see DCB the order of that matters, so if i'm going from D to C to B the direction of that rotation is going to be in that direction right starting at d and going to b um, that's going to be a uh in this case clockwise rotation right right clockwise rotation so so we would have to say that um uh, for this particular one we're going to be um going clockwise but if it were b c d the same thing except reverse then we would be going uh counterclockwise Uh, so anyway, just to finish this one up, if that's what you were doing, says object to rotate center point 70 degrees and then clockwise. So rotating this 70 degrees up here, then we get this point up top here. Um, there is one other one that I get some, um, or I just want to make sure that everybody gets that. I think this is uh, some easy points. I don't want anybody to uh, miss this one. <clears throat> um, and that was the questions about <clears throat> um, ellipses. So I'm going to find an example of that. Uh, let's let's work from this angle. So let me try and find one. Yeah. So this one here. Um, let's see. Am I sharing the screen all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this ellipse here, um, you can see that. Um, uh, it's not in the right form. So I've got I've got sixteen x squared plus four y squared is equal to sixty four. Um, 
what I'd really like to do is um, uh, get this in the form that I showed you for ellipses, which is uh, x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared is equal to one. Okay, so that's gonna, that's gonna be much nicer. Um, so they gave you, I think in all these examples that I saw, they gave you some nice round numbers, um, but I would start off first thing, just divide everything by whatever this number is on the right. That way you'll get equals one, right? And you'll have it in this form. So, so 16 divided by 64, um, I am gonna, I'm gonna cheat. And, I thought it was four. <laughs> I was just double checking. So anyway, this will be uh, x squared divided by four plus, and then this will be y squared divided by 16 is equal to one. Now it's gonna be a little bit easier to figure out what a is and what b is. So a squared is equal to four b squared is equal to 16, so a is equal to 2, b is equal to 4. Um, so what that means for us is this uh, axis along the, um, uh, this axis along the <clears throat> um, uh, horizontal, that's going to be our a measurement, right, because that's what's going with um, our x down here. And then this B measurement is gonna be what's going with our Y axis. So this will be two and this will be four. So let's see if we have that as an option somewhere. Yep, this one here. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the trick I would suggest for this one is just to um, uh, divide everything by, divide everything by uh, whatever this number is here, get it equal to one and that'll help you out. Okay. Um, another one that I got uh, questions about was uh, area. Uh, so if you have something, uh, I think I'll maybe have time for uh, just one or two more of these, um, but I can go back to uh, so yeah, this type of question, right? This is just exactly what we did, except not inside of a circle. Uh, so you can tell that that's a uh, you know uh, important topic, right? They want you to know about that. Uh, okay, here we go. This is a good one. Right. So I'll do two different versions of this one. Uh, so it says A, B, C, and P, Q, R are similar. All right, it doesn't hurt to draw these out. All right, drawing them in the same, uh, same order. Okay, so the area of ABC is 12. If PQ is 24, so PQ is 24, and AB is four, find the area of PQR. So the area of this one is 12. Okay, um, what's going on here? I like, I like to break it down this way. You have a formula that you can use for this, but I like to, I like to break it down so that I can kind of uh, logic my way through it rather than, rather than try to memorize a formula. Um, so I wanna be able to make a statement about the side length. So lengths um, 
I want to be able to complete this sentence, right? So if I say the lengths change by a factor of, because all these lengths, if they're similar triangles, all these lengths are going to change by the same amount. So um, when I say lengths can change by a factor of, um, uh, let's go with, uh, well, this is getting six times as large, right? Like four times six is 24, but more generally we can say, right? It's changing by a factor of 24 over four, which is uh, six. So, so lengths are changing by a factor of six. That means that areas change by a factor of uh, not six, right? So this is not gonna be 12 times six, this is gonna be 12 times six squared. Right, so we're always squaring whatever uh, value we come up with here. Right, so the area increase, or sorry, uh, the lengths increase by six, the areas increase by six squared. So the area that we're looking for here is um, uh, uh, 12 times 36. Uh, this is the only one that makes sense. For that. Right, so it's got to be that one. Uh, notice that 12 times six is an option, right? Just to throw you off. So um, just be aware of that. They may also give you some areas, right? So if you figure out, let's look at a problem where they do that. <clears throat> uh-huh. Okay. okay. Uh, so now they're giving us the areas. So uh, we've got that the area of uh, ABC. So the area is a uh, 12, and then we've got PQR, which is a little bigger. And we've got the area of that one is equal to 120. Um, AB is equal to four, and then PQ is equal to, uh, we don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so the statement we can make here, we don't know how much the lengths are increasing yet, but we can say that areas Uh, areas change by a factor of uh, 10, right? They're getting 10 times as big, 120 divided by 12. So if the areas are changing by a factor of 10, that means that the lengths change by a factor of, oh no, well, I remember the problem, right? So, uh, so lengths change by a factor of, um, um, it's not gonna be squared, or sorry, it's not gonna be 10 squared this time because we're going from areas to lengths. So lengths are gonna change by a factor of square root of 10. Now, the other thing that's different about this is, oh, I guess, I guess that's not the, uh, that's not terribly different, right? So, so here we're gonna be multiplying, applying, um, if we want to find the length of PQ, that's going to be this length four times square root of 10. Uh, but just make sure that um, they, they could reverse it, right? They could be telling you this one and asking you for this over here in a different problem. Um, but yeah, in this case, the lengths are all going to change by a factor. Uh, they're going to get around 3.1 times as large. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, yeah, that'll be um, uh, that'll be how much those uh, lengths change by. So just be prepared to do either version of that, right? Um, you might get one or the other. <clears throat> okay. 
All right, I think those are all the ones that I wanted to go over that I got questions about. Um, the rest of them, right, make sure you're really comfortable with GeoGebra finding all those centers. Um, oh, I guess I can talk about one more thing that I see. Um, so uh, this one's asking, well, um, excuse me, this one's asking for, um, uh, which of the centers you can find here, but um, I'm more going to talk about one. I think I think most people have that down. Um, I want to talk more about right this thirty sixty ninety and uh, forty five forty five ninety and the three four five triangles, right? Because sometimes we'll get a question asking about. Uh, hey, can you make a 30, 60, 90 triangle? Can you make a 45, 45, 90? Can you make a three, four, five? Um, what they're trying to get at is, um, can you make an isosceles? Right? Like, have you made enough construction marks in this case to make an isosceles triangle? Um, in this case here, we're asking, um, have you made, um, uh, sorry, in this case here, we're asking, have you made um, enough marks to show that uh, if you're looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? If this side length is six, then this shorter length is three, right? So half of that. So basically, have you made enough marks to figure out the midpoint of this line in order to create this line here. All right, so another way, if you if you label these uh, A, B, and C, right, um, basically, do you have you made enough construction marks to find the midpoint of this? Because the midpoint of this is the side length over here. Um, and then for a three, four, five triangle, they're really, that's, that's more of an obscure, um, so, so you know that uh, three squared plus four squared is equal to five squared. That's like a uh, common triangle that you'll see. Um, but unlike this one where you have this special relationship between uh, like, you know, it's sine of 30 degrees is one half. So you get this nice uh, uh, one half ratio between these two. Um, apart from these all being whole numbers, there's no nice angle between here, right? So. So the answer, do you have enough information to make this three, four, five triangle? Um, there's not enough construction marks that they would have you draw where you would need to know. Um, mostly what they're trying to get across is that you don't need, um, um, or sorry, that there's not a special ratio uh, between these angles, right? Other than the fact that this is a whole number three, four, and five. Um, so uh, so the, the answer there is that you do not, you cannot, make enough construction marks to do this. Um, here's an interesting one though. Um, this one's uh, maybe something that we can uh, just spend the last minute here figuring out. Uh, so first step is knowing what the, um, which, um, the in center, median, altitude, circumcenter, right? Um, uh, which of those go with like the, um, uh, well, I guess, I, I, you know, some, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll talk about the in center. Uh, so know that, for example, the in center goes with an angle bisector and that the median goes to the centroid and what all those mean. Um, uh, so let's see, what are we trying to make here? Um, it doesn't make sense to make an angle bisector. Oh no. Let's see if I can find it again. Uh, oh, perfect. We got, we got the same one. Okay. So, um, 
Um, it doesn't make sense to make an angle bisector of this angle, right? Which it kind of seems like maybe they're maybe they were doing that. Uh, but remember, angle bisectors uh, kind of utilize these two lines on either side of that angle to make the angle bisector. So that's not what we're doing here. Um, so that means we can eliminate, it's not the in center, right? Because we're not making an angle bisector. Um, a median, a median goes from this point to the midpoint of the opposite line. So are we finding the, let's see if we're finding the uh, midpoint of the opposite line here. Um, that would look like uh, something like this, where we make marks like that. Uh, remember, we get those, right? Those, uh, that perpendicular bisector that gives us the midpoint here. Um, but that doesn't look like what we're making here. So I would say it's not a median. Um, the circumcenter, so you'll need to know that that's based off the perpendicular bisector. And like I said already, we're not making a perpendicular bisector with this line. So the only one that's left is the orthocenter. Let's see if that makes sense. Are we making a, an altitude line here? So when you want a perpendicular line through a point, uh, the process for that looks like this. You start off by centering here, make two marks on either side, and then use those two marks to make a center point here. And then draw that line through it. All right. That's how you make that's how you make a perpendicular line through a point. Sure enough, that's what we're doing here. Right. Two marks on either side of this line that we want to be perpendicular to. And then those two marks gives us that altitude line. So we're trying to find the orthocenter here. Um, something that's well, I guess I'll give you one more hint since I'm on the subject. Uh, something that was a little bit tricky that some people got tripped up on um, is they would say, well, why, um, you know, it, it would show something like this. It would say, here's a line, here's a triangle. And it would say something like, uh, it would have marks that looked like this. Or just, just marks that looked like that, or even, even just marks that only showed these two pieces here. Um, so, so what we're making here is a perpendicular bisector, right? Right, what we're making is a perpendicular bisector and then the question will be something like, um, are these marks enough to um, find the uh, median, right? And uh, some of you might uh, look at this and say, well, uh, I'm not trying to find the, I'm finding a perpendicular bisector here, right? I'm finding a perpendicular bisector, not a, um, uh, a median line, right? A median line goes from this point to, uh, would go from this point to uh, uh, this midpoint here. So no, I'm not finding a median, I'm finding a perpendicular bisector. Um, but what they're um, failing to recognize is that if you want that midpoint, right, that you need for a median, the only way to find that with constructions is through that perpendicular bisector. So when you're finding a perpendicular bisector, you're also finding that's the process you would use to um, find a median. Uh, so, so yes, 
And it's actually the only way that you can find that median is by uh, not using that perpendicular bisector, but just using that midpoint, right? So just make sure you're not uh, blindly um, only connecting perpendicular bisectors with, um, uh, with just finding the circumcenter. But anyway, I'm, I'm going over, so uh, I'm gonna end it there. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me. I'll try to keep that open um, while I work on some other stuff. Um, uh, where am I going to post this? Um, I'm going to record it and see if YouTube will accept it, um, and then I'll post that in an announcement. All right, thank you. I'm I'm feeling better already today. Today was much better. I was um, yeah, it was real bad, but feeling better now. All right, take care, everyone.